Dad, what are you doing here? I was in the neighborhood. I realized I hadn't seen your office since you became a member of the bar. Well, that's sweet, but my office hasn't changed one bit, so why don't you tell me what you're really doing here? I came to tell you that was one hell of a move you made. Uh, use my own daughter against me with the Reform Corp case. I'm not just your daughter. I'm a lawyer. That's why I'm here. I want to work with you. I don't follow. Rachel, Frank Gallo wanted to connect with his daughter. I waited until it was too late. I don't want to make that same mistake. And I appreciate that, Dad. But I've also made it really clear that I want to make my own way. No, I'm not talking about you switching firms. I'm talking about a pro bono. Oh, I know you did one with Jessica last year. I thought maybe it was time you did one with me. What kind of case? Predatory lending. They're taking advantage of people of color. I'd really like that. But I have to clear it with Harvey first. No, you don't. I told the man I wanted to work with my family, and he said, of course, Robert. How can I stand in the way of that? Well, in that case, I think we should head back to your office and get ready to show those bastards what the team of Zane and Zane can do. Ms. Sanowski, my name's Rachel Zane. This is my father, Robert Zane. Did we have an appointment? Because I have a full schedule today. You're going to have to clear it, because this lawsuit just became your number one priority. A discrimination suit. This is unbelievable. What's unbelievable is that your bank thought they could rip people off for years without anyone noticing. Let me guess. You're going to slap me with this and turn around and 15 seconds later tell me you want to settle. I don't want to settle anything. I want to depose your CEO. Well, that's not going to happen. Bullshit is not. This is a legitimate lawsuit. Then why don't we skip the part where you punch me and I counterpunch you and you go ahead and give me your bottom line number right now? One. One what? One son of a bitch who's been screwing over people. That's my number. And I want the man's head on a platter. Then I guess I'll see you in court because I'm not going to let you depose my boss without a fight. Your Honor, this bank has a practice of predatory lending. It starts at the top. And we can end this whole thing quickly by deposing their CEO. They need to end this quickly because they have nothing. And if every time a lawyer wanted to sit down my client and depose him, he'd never be able to do his job. What a wonderful argument. You can't depose us because we're too busy screwing over our clients. Mr. Zane, if you want to tie up an important man for hours on end, you need to show there's enough evidence to warrant it. I'll give you evidence, Your Honor. We'll show the jury John Fuller who makes $80,000 a year and has his own business. And then we'll show them Mae Grossman, who makes the same but has at least that much in credit card debt. And then we'll ask the jury who they would give the better mortgage to. And we're willing to bet that all 12 will pick Mr. Fuller. Which is who his bank would have picked if he weren't African American. Your Honor, they're picking two cases. Two out of 100. And I'm sure there's an explanation. Then get your goddamn CEO in here to give it. That's enough, Mr. Zane. I'm willing to let you build a case, but I need evidence your claims are true before I'm going to let you figure out who to blame. Your you Honor. can start by deposing the loan officers. But unless there's enough there to make a case, that's all you're going to get. OK, let's go over the plan. OK, we make every one of these loan officers think that we've seen their records. And if they're not willing to admit this came from the top, we're going to show that they did this all on their own. In which case, we report them to HUD, and they never work in banking again. Good. Good. You know, the last time we, we worked together on something like this was when you helped me with Model UN. I was Switzerland. And as I recall, Switzerland's never kicked so much ass. I'm glad you put off that wedding. What? I thought you liked Mike. I do. But you put it off to spend time on your career. And because of that, I'm spending time with you right now. Ms. Davies? You look surprised. We have the time right, don't we? Yes, you do. <clears throat> Before we get started, I would just like to point out, we're not just here to get justice for our clients. We're also here to protect you. Careful, Lisa. They're trying to get your trust before they stab you in the back. We're not stabbing anyone. We have 123 plaintiffs who are all steered into higher rate mortgages, all of whom happen to be people of color. 
And what exactly is your question? We want to know who gave your client the goddamn mandate. There is no mandate. And just because it's not written down doesn't mean it's not understood. I've been a loan officer at Avon for 10 years. Our lending process doesn't allow for discrimination. How is that possible? A computer program strips out race, gender, and photos before approval officers ever see the application. Bullshit. Then why even ask for those things in the first place? Because we have to protect against identity fraud. And none of that stops the boss from telling you to deny number 512 their rightful mortgage. Because he's a predatory piece of shit. And he's using fools like you to cover his own ass. Excuse me? Dad. How can you work for a man like that? I would never work for a place that engaged in discrimination. And I am more than happy to say that on the stand. Well, you're going to get your chance because something is going on here and I'm going to get to the bottom of this. We're done here. Bullshit. We're done. We have five more people to depose. And they're going to say the exact same thing Lisa just did. But I'm not going to give you the chance to treat them the way you just treated her. What I am going to do is petition the judge to have this case thrown out. I thought you went back to your office. No, I didn't. I thought that I would give you some time to calm down and think about telling me the truth about what is going on here. Nothing's going on. Dad, you said that you wanted to be closer to me. Now's your chance. This case isn't about race or money. The man who heads up this company is a predator through and through. And I wanted to get him back for going after the one person I should have helped when I had the chance, but I didn't. Who? 25 years ago, that CEO was a branch manager, Arthur Kittredge. And your aunt worked for him. And he made her life a living hell. Because she was black? Because she was beautiful. He wouldn't leave her alone. Finally, she threatened to do something, and he fired her. And you didn't help her? I was a young attorney. Taking on a case like that was only going to get me fired, too. So I told her there was nothing we could do. And after that, her life fell apart. Dad, why didn't you ever tell me any of this before? Because she died. A few years later, and I was ashamed. And then I watched your fiancé risk his career to help those prisoners, and I knew I had to do something. You only knew her later. But if you had seen her before, smart, beautiful, full of life, she could have been anything she wanted. Just like you. I wish I had known her then. But Dad, I know that whenever you set your mind to something, there is nothing that can stop you. So I say, we take the night and we regroup. And tomorrow morning, find a way. <laughs>